Getting into bow hunting is one of the most challenging and rewarding ways to hunt. Now, I'm not knocking on rifle hunters. I enjoy rifle hunting too. It's another awesome way to hunt. However, with bow hunting, you have to get a lot closer to the deer and you end up spending a lot more time enjoying the outdoors. And it seems like there are more people than ever out there trying out bow hunting. I don't know if it's people want to get more deer meat or maybe they tried it during the pandemic and just absolutely fell in love with it. Whatever the reason, there are more people out there with their bows than ever before. And with so many newer bow hunters out there that just means there's a lot of inexperienced people out there using their bows and hopefully you've got a mentor around you somebody to kind of show you the ropes kind of guide you through your hunting experiences but if not then you are bound to just stumble through and just learn things the hard way now sometimes you have to learn things the hard way for them to stick but i think that one of the keys to really getting into bow hunting to really enjoying the outdoors is to have early success. So in this video, we're gonna go over some very common beginner bow hunting mistakes. Now, hopefully this video kind of helps you learn what to avoid, what not to do. Hopefully this helps you maybe shoot your first deer or maybe even see your first deer and then you'll be hooked for the rest of your life. But before we go over these mistakes, do me a favor and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first mistake that a lot of new bow hunters make is they have some pretty unrealistic expectations. If you're new to hunting, chances are you've been watching a lot of hunting shows, whether that's the big productions on TV or some YouTube hunting channels that some of them are very good. They're very close to what real world hunting is like, but others make you think that you've got to wait for those giant world-class bucks, even if you've never shot one before. And while I'm all for passing young bucks because bucks have to grow old in order to get big, when you're just starting out, you don't need to set that bar that high. Unless you're hunting with somebody on their property and they've got some very specific requirements for what bucks you can and can't shoot you should still be in that if it's brown it's downstage as long as it's a legal buck and you'd be happy with it don't worry about what other people think what other people are shooting you're not at that point you, that's not your journey you haven't you, you're not even on the trail yet you haven't shot your first deer as you get more experience and you shoot more bucks then you can start getting more and more picky with it just don't let social media dictate what your standard should be you will get to that point at some point now you can start out only shooting mature deer if you want to but I think if you're letting those standards come from what you think you should be shooting and not because what would make you happy, you're just going to get frustrated and then you'll probably just quit. So set your own standards. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing and then shoot what makes you happy. You'll get to that point eventually. And the second mistake that a lot of new bow hunters make is they just don't practice enough. New bow hunters typically have a lot of bad habits, whether that's target panic or maybe relying on the rangefinder too much. They can't really accurately judge that distance without having to range it every single time. Time, a drawing at the wrong times. There's some nuances to knowing when you should and shouldn't draw. There's just a lot of bad habits that bow hunters have to break. They got they have to learn these things through experience. Practice blind bill firing to help with your form and rid yourself of target panic. Practice judging distances because a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to range something before you take that shot. A lot of times deer come in, you have this small window of opportunity and they just don't give you the time or you don't even have a range finder. So then you really have to be good at it. You also need to practice real work world hunting situations. One of the best investments that you can make is a quality 3D target. It's very different shooting at a 3D target than it is a square one with high contrast dots for you to aim at. On a 3D target, you may not have a good area, you know, a good frame of reference. So you got to learn where to aim. Practice shooting at that 3D target from different distances, different angles, and even practice holding your bow at full draw for different lengths of time before you take the shot. What happens a lot is you'll have a deer come in to range and you will draw your bow and then they take a step or they turn in a way that you don't have a clear shot anymore and it's a lot of movement to let your bow down and sometimes you got to hold that bow back at full draw until they give you that clear shot again sometimes that's five seconds sometimes that's 10 sometimes that's even longer so when your muscles are fatigued like that it's so much harder to take an accurate shot as you get more experience you learn better when you should draw your bow but sometimes even when you know better that excitement gets to you and you draw at the wrong time now if you practice at home or your shooting club or wherever those worst case scenarios, you'll be prepared for when those things happen out in the field. And the next mistake that a lot of beginner bow hunters make, or actually just new hunters in general make, is they fail to realize how important wind direction is. This is something I didn't learn as quickly as I should have. There were a lot of blown hunts where I either saw that 
that deer flick up its nose, smell the air, and then just snort and run off, or if I heard the snort off in the distance, I couldn't even tell you. There's no way to calculate how many hunts, how many of those empty sits where I could have seen something if I'd sat in a spot that had better wind direction. Well, I knew the importance of scent control. I foolishly thought that because I believed all the marketing crap, that if I used all the scent eliminating detergent, all those fancy sprays, that I could fool the deer's nose. Now, I'm not poking fun at that particular, actually, I guess I kind of am making fun of that particular product, that slogan. I just, I failed to realize how huge of a mistake it was to rely on those scent eliminating products. It doesn't matter if you have the best scent control technology that's out there right now, you're not going to fool that deer's nose. Now you may get away with it with some very young deer, but if you're after some older deer, some bigger does, some bigger bucks especially, you have to learn how important prevailing wind direction is. You need to quit using scent elimination products as your main defense against that. That's your backup. Knowing where your scent is going to be blowing is going to help you decide not only where you should hunt, but how you're going to get to that stand. Getting to and from your stand scent as scent free and as quietly as possible is just as important, if not more important, than when you are in your stand, especially if you are in a permanent stand type of setup. Like you've got a ladder stand that's always in this tree. If you've got a situation where your scent is always blowing into known bedding areas, you're always bumping deer getting to this stand, you're not going to have anywhere near the success you would if you had a stand that kept your scent away from those bedding areas and you didn't hunt that when you had bad wind direction. That's another bad thing that a lot of newer hunters make is they have a stand where they, they know this is going to be a great place. They have all this good sign and then they're still not getting the, the conditions they, they need for that. They don't have that, I don't know, west wind that they need to get in there undetected but they say, screw it, I'm just gonna hunt it anyway. Well, then they don't see anything and then the sign kind of dies down and they wonder, where did all my deer go? Is it the October lull? Is it, you know, whatever it is, it's because you forced yourself into that stand, you let your scent give yourself away and you essentially ruin that spot. You really have to think about how your scent is gonna travel across the landscape when you're deciding where to hunt. You, have, you need to understand how thermals work. You need to understand how your, how your scent is affected by different humidity levels, all these different things you really need to think about when you're deciding where to hunt and how to get there. And another mistake that a lot of beginner bow hunters make, actually again, this is another one that a lot of just new hunters in general make, is they rely way too much on these scents and attractants. Scent attractants like those buck bombs and magic dust or any other thing that you sprinkle on the ground, they might work, but to rely on them to determine whether or not you're gonna have a success on any given hunt is just wishful thinking. I really don't think that some puff of vanilla smoke that lasts 20 seconds or so is gonna mean the difference between a successful hunt and going back to your house without seeing a damn thing. Save your money and go scout out a spot that deer are gonna travel through anyway. Hunting can be expensive enough as it is. So that was some mistakes a lot of beginner bow hunters make. If you've got any more mistakes that you'd like to share, something that you learn the hard way that you want to help prevent somebody else from having to go through, make sure you leave that down in the comments below. And hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.